Ah, yes, the old Paramount logo, when they used to be a Gulf Western company. The good old days when rich people could just buy entertainment companies for $125 million and then sell them for $10 billion 30 years later. Glad to know the practice of overvaluing content ended in the 90s and that all companies have evolved away from the capitalistic tendencies toward overpaying for art. Taking two tiny American flags to the beach with you just in case you want to impress a girl by building an intricate sandcastle and then immediately claiming it for the United States of America. I'm going back to Australia. I might never see you again. And she's just mentioning this now? After all the falling in love and kisses? What a horrible person. Don't talk that way, Sandy. Or better yet, just don't talk because that's not ladylike. Zuko, probably. Daddy, don't spoil it. It's not spoiling it, Sandy. It's only making it better. Turning a no into a but have you thought about it this way. This radio dial starts at 102 and goes all the way up to 187, and that just seems unnatural. Oh, and the fact that it's beating like a heart, but mostly the numbers thing. Asking your barber for the Dr. Seuss truffula tree cut. Where is this person living that an entire wall is dedicated to only a towel rack and a sink? Why is he throwing his toothpaste to the ground? Why was I not informed to drop my gummy an hour earlier to better enjoy this insane opening credit sequence? The iconic Grease logo comes from a squirt of hair gel? Grease is a word and a feeling about hair gel? Jesus. There is no universe where Danny's reflection is this large in this mirror without us seeing him in the foreground of this shot. This mirror is a lie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that? Chlorophyll added? What am I watching? Before the internet, college students actually tried to see how many people they could squeeze into phone booths as a fun activity. And the sin is that the internet took our phone booths away. Rear view windows. Debbie Reynolds was never in a movie called Tammy. She was in a movie called Tammy and the Bachelor, which this theater would have had room for if it didn't start by spelling out the entire name of the star first. Holy sh**, Barney's Beanery is in the opening titles of Grease. I literally had the best breakfast sandwich of my life at that place. Now I'm just mad that I'm still watching the titles five minutes into the movie instead of in Santa Monica eating another one of those sandwiches. The kids arrive at school early enough to have hijinks before the school day fallacy goes back farther than you might think. This pigtailed student is walking through the parking lot, but in a previous scene she was showing off her balancing skills before the bell rang. Why would she detour to the parking lot? And why is she so happy about risking a tardy? Janda is so adolescent! <laughs> we are adolescent! Are you though? Stocker Channing was 33 when she played this role, and she wasn't the only one in the main cast in their 30s. So the sin, as always, is not kids. We now reach the part of the movie where the protagonists bully a nerd because he wears glasses and dresses up for school. Allow me to point out the obvious again. These are not good people. This student has a clear view of Kanicki as he finishes dumping the frog in the bag. So sure, Kanicki is an asshole for pulling the prank, but she has to be counted on the list of Rydell riffraff. They just announced the nominees for student council and guess who's up for vice president? It's the first day of school and the student body has already had time to elect potential members for the council? And all before lunch? And the director said, let's have Jan take a bite out of an apple that was already left half-eaten by some asshole on the table, picked up by some other asshole to place it under yet another character's asshole so we can hit the asshole trifecta and there will be no doubt every single character in this movie is an asshole. One of my diamonds just fell on the macaroni! And that, my friends, is how scenes ended in 1978. And it was considered to be normal. Any of you guys see that new chicken registration? We assume Kaniki is talking about Sandra, but the guys didn't go into the registration office, and they didn't look into it either. Remember? They walked away to abuse the nerd, because that's funny. And if you didn't think that was funny, just wait until we go back to the scene in progress where this guy is actively peeping up a skirt. Hilarious stuff here. Why does everyone at the school leave apples lying around? Ah! We're now into Summer Nights, and the change from the audio tone of the spoken dialogue to the sung dialogue is, let's just say, extremely noticeable. I'd be willing to believe high school students would break out in simultaneous matching songs across campus if only the sound quality didn't change. Duty is now using this hand motion and asking Danny to tell him if he got very far. And all I have to say, Duty, is that this doesn't speak very well for your chances at understanding mutual intimacy and sexual fulfillment. Yes, that's right. Even though we can't play it for you, can Nikki just ask Zuko? if she put up a fight, indicating that as far as he's concerned, there's a distinct possibility that Danny would have sexually assaulted her. In America, 570 people a day are sexually assaulted, and I just cannot stress hard enough how much this movie can go f*** itself off a cliff. Also is, did she put up a fight the only line that they could rhyme with love at first sight? How about, did you stay out all night? Or were her curls extra tight? Or look, a meteorite. This guy. Cheer up, man. There's a whole inappropriate song and dance number going on nearby. Uh... No. Casually burning your rivals in effigy. This very confusing sign that makes it appear as though the Rydell students are cheering for their own demise. Also, Sandy is very clearly standing and cheering here, but she also just sat down in front of the coach a moment ago. If she had a twin, then this story just got twice as interesting. We're gonna yank him and 
tear them and rip them, oh, God, I take them and roll them around and rip them up to pieces, and then we're gonna slaughter them. Sports. Guys, be cool. Naming your own movies 27 years in advance. Hey, Zoko, <laughs> I got a surprise for you. Sandy is standing right there. Did she not hear Riz just yell the name Zuko? Is that a common name in the 50s? Is this the last airbender high? Danny does not immediately run from this facial expression. <laughs> What's the matter with me, baby? What's the matter with you? I'm putting up with toxic masculinity in the movie because I know eventually he'll certainly learn his lesson, right? At least I know the whole plot won't revolve around her actually validating this machismo by becoming a different person to please him, right? <laughs> right? Who's putting out the fires? There are amoebas on fleas on rats. I just googled, do amoebas live on fleas? And Google responded with, you're sinning grease and you're focusing on this sh Danny called his friends dorks a few seconds ago, and that wasn't even a word until the late 60s. Do I have to write this sh for you? F off with the amoebas on fleas nonsense. F***ing Google. The only man a girl can depend on is her daddy. That is not true. Here, Frenchie, you can use my virgin pimp. Yeah, it's nice to know it's good for something. With the upcoming entire song making fun of Sandy's virginity, we now have slut shaming and virgin shaming all in the same scene. What an accomplishment. Drinking with your lips completely outside the bottle. Hey, you gotta use the toilet. And later on, is that the scratch like hell? Ah, the good old days when young men sang odes to venereal diseases. <laughs> We've lost so much. Eat your heart out. Well, sloppy seconds ain't my style. Where are you going, to flog your log? Holy sh**, this movie is explicit. I mean, you knew it was horny, but did you remember it was basically 1950s euphoria up in here? So what you guys think this is, a gangbang? See? ONJ is now singing Hopelessly Devoted, and I'm skipping this schmaltzy song in honor of all the people who've had to sit through it at weddings. People use this ballad of codependency in weddings. What is wrong with you people? Look at this crystal clear pool, and then look at the ground and ask yourself one question. Do you believe in magic water that disintegrates leaves? I didn't know that I'd be adding another scene to my movie kisses that make me want to vomit list today, but here we are. Look, Travolta is stunning in this movie, and some of these songs are a lot of fun, but even Greased Lightning, supposedly a song about cars, includes lines like, You know that ain't no sh**, we'll be getting lots of t and you are supreme, the chicks will cream, and I just can't bring myself to take a sin off for any of it. Also, as Danny sings the title song of the movie, or playing, I mean, musical, whatever. I can't help but wonder why Kanicki doesn't take the lead on this one. It's his car, right? Sure, Danny ends up driving it in the race at the end of the movie, but it's Kanicki's car. Kanicki saved up for it all summer. Lighting a flame this big next to this much hair product. What is this, a Pepsi commercial? Who posts a 35 mile per hour speed limit sign on this two-way downtown street 50 feet from the corner? If you're going 35 when you see this sign, you're about to crash head first into a loan from the Sulkin Loan Company. Eating an ice cream cone in the room where people sh**. Too bad his brains are in his biceps. But why would the location matter? Honestly, he's a football player, so they're probably safer there anyway. I don't care how bad Zuko is, if this basketball team only has six players, his spot on the roster is guaranteed. This team is an injury and an ejection away from putting the other team on permanent power play. Am I sporting correctly? And now we're on to wrestling and then baseball. I bet when you think of Greece, it's the Danny Zuko tries to be an athlete for 10 minutes part that keeps you coming back, isn't it? Man, you gotta try, you gotta try, try, come on. Coaching. Sandy, come on, let's, let's go someplace else. But wouldn't Danny already know all his Hepcat pals would be hanging out here? Why not have this conversation before pulling in and getting out of the car? Look at this very natural and common occurrence where all eight of your friends crowd around the same end of the table instead of spreading out around it as if posing for some sort of invisible camera on the other side. And I also think that there's more to you than just fat. But he survives this. Well, I have been dieting all day long. Dieting? After this and the previous comment, I have to ask an honest question. Does this movie think Jan is overweight? Seriously, what is this sh**? No, Danielle, I'm kind of worried about this dance-off. Maybe they dance different here than we do back home. And yet she will go on to dance in perfect step with Danny without the movie showing us how frequently they would need to practice in order to do so. Come on, let's get out of here, Sandy. This entire scene evolved to the gang descending onto these two tables, ordering a sh** ton of food, and then immediately abandoning the food. I remember being hungry all the time when I was a kid. Let him eat, movie! Stop rushing us from scene to scene to cover up the bullshit. If only I could have a guardian angel to tell me what to do. You know, like, like Debbie Reynolds had in Tammy. Now you might think I'd add another sin here because, as mentioned, Debbie Reynolds wasn't in a movie called Tammy, but here's the thing. She did sing a song called Tammy for the movie Tammy and the Bachelor. So Frenchie could be talking about that. So I'm not adding a sin for that. I'm adding a sin because this all somehow leads to a psychedelic Frankie Avalon guardian angel dream where the 50s suddenly become 70s as f Never in the history of mankind has a restaurant closed that fast. As if to keep the streak of having every song include some sort of poorly aged lyric intact, the song about being a beauty school dropout includes the line, you think you're such a looker, but no customer would go to you unless she was a hooker. <sighs> Biggest thing that ever happened to Rydell High and we don't have dates. Thinking you need a date to 
do anything. You're late, fellas. Man, I wasn't feeling any of the energy of this dance, but then I found out the band members were all late, and now, boy, oh boy, I'm super invested now. What's gonna happen next? This dancer with the red flowers on her dress is facing an unseen audience down here, and Frenchie is here. But when the camera angle changes, the dancer is suddenly behind Frenchie. Basically, this means for the rest of this dance scene, I'm assuming everyone is everywhere and continuity is dead. Maybe I'm grossly misremembering my teenage years, but I'm pretty certain that no one should have this much energy for a warm-up dance. The cameras aren't even rolling yet. Save your sweet moves for the energy burst before the crash and respect your goddamn knee joints a little more, you zany kids. Fred and Ginger. <laughs> movie wants us to be concerned that the names are mixed up, but that never actually becomes a thing at all. As if they didn't already look like chaperones instead of students, the movie boneheadedly decides to put Danny and Sandy next to some actual children. Let's go, Sandy. Gee, it sure is swell to watch Sandy be grabbed and moved around from scene to scene like some sort of prop on an arm. I'm Vince Fontaine. And I'm about to flirt and dance with a teenager in front of an audience of people without anyone batting a lash. The never-ending void of this gaping maw. The feet are saying we're facing the same direction, but the dance is not. Let's have for the toilet paper! Thing I say 20 minutes after every Taco Bell trip somehow makes it into the script. Game rule one. All couples must be boy-girl. Organize religion. Remember earlier when it seemed like the waitress was telling Frenchie she couldn't work at the ice cream shop because she was too young? Well, these gals look young enough to be the main cast. But why is Blanche going from one side of the stage to the other side of the stage to dance? Better question, why is she on the stage at all? Having all the students together in one room under the lights of a TV show must make this room scorching hot. So why not use the fan that was hauled into the room and plugged in? He's a terrible judge. He just kicked out Rowdy Duty and Frenchie after they were absolutely killing it a few seconds ago. I mean, he's a terrible human as well for trying to seduce a high schooler, but also a terrible dance judge. We clearly see Sonny sneaking up from behind for the oh-so-hilarious guy lifts up the girl's skirt gag, but when we cut, it's Kanicki who slides in for the oh-so-comedic sexual harassment. The movie thinks we need a moment for our favorites to take center stage so that our hearts are happy, but in reality, I am a heartless robot person furiously attempting to reconcile how any of the surrounding dancers aren't in the mix attempting to win this nationally televised dance competition. All 66 frames of this guy's gawking. We have pictures of you so-called mooners. And just because the pictures aren't of your faces doesn't mean we can't identify you. But you also have hundreds of live witnesses and countless more who watch video of the entire show, right? Plus, there is no way they got their pants up before being tackled and captured in the moment. Why is the movie making it seem like they could have gotten away with this? <laughs> making me watch a preview for a movie I'd actually rather be watching. This actor's destroyed ankle. Oh, come on, Sandy. I told you on the phone that I was sorry. Well, yes, but I still think that you and Chacha went together. Being mad at someone for decisions they made before you even knew them. Drinking a product placement Pepsi in the room where people sh**. Do you think you're PG? Thing that the NPAA said to Greece, but then let them keep the rating anyway somehow makes its way into the script that includes a casual use of the phrase gangbang. Dear Diary, today I thought about smoking cigarettes again. I always thought I'd be tempted to smoke if Kenny G resurged in terrestrial radio popularity, but no. After watching the entire cast and all the extras light up for a solid 90 minutes, I thought about it. I wondered, if I light up an ash over my keyboard, maybe. Maybe it will ignite the accumulated crumbs on my keyboard and start a fire that will grow to engulf my screen and I won't have to watch this dumb fucking movie anymore. Also, why are these ridiculous people blocking the stalls of the ladies' restroom to smoke in a pod like this? They don't have to hide their addiction. Everyone smoked in the 50s and this movie has gone to extreme lengths to shove this addiction in our faces. Smoking in the bathroom is disgusting. Get out of the shit cloud hot box and smoke in the fresh air while your lungs can still function. Marty, you ain't gonna tell nobody about this, right? Just the entire fucking goddamn bathroom because you morons are talking so loud. This song is called Alone at a Drive-In, rather than reflecting on my sexual assault attempt, standing in front of the movie projector while singing the worst song in the musical. This bun coaxing this hot dog inside it in the background is about as subtle as, well, the rest of this movie. Also, movie inadvertently gives Seth Rogen the idea for Sausage Party. Does that say show starts in zero minutes, but doesn't that mean it should have already started? And also why, if that's the case, are you still instructing people to visit the refreshment center? I thought that... You could maybe be my second at Thunder Road. You want me to drive with you or, or what? No. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey. Some people think that being the second means Danny would die for his friend or drive for his friend or be a dad to Kenneke's child yet to be, but the movie isn't clear about it. And I refuse to believe that Danny actually understands what he's agreeing to here. <laughs> uh, well, listen, I'll pick you up at three, huh? And we're throwing in some gay panic humor for good measure. 
just so we're clear on the message of this part of the song, Riz is now insinuating that it's a girl's responsibility to put out if she's going to flirt, and it's worse to not see it through if you've pressed up against a guy, and this song is one it hurts if I don't finish away from being in the Blue Ball Myth Hall of Fame. Hey, the rules are there ain't no rules. Except that one, right? I mean, you can't say that there not being rules is a rule, because that would be a paradox. At best, you could say there's only one rule, and that's that this is the only rule. That would both accomplish what you meant to say, and also demoralize your opponent with your depth of knowledge and non-paradoxical syntax. Win-win, honestly. Also, it's all mood anyway, because his very next line is... It's to a second bridge and back. Which is, you guessed it, a rule. <laughs> These idiots were like, hey, let's stand up above where we can barely see anything, and then let's hide out of sight until about three seconds after the race starts for maximum dramatic effect. Quick question, if you're racing for the papers to the car, why destroy it? They yell to each other from across a vast distance that would absolutely not carry their tiny, feeble insults. That's just terrible strategy on both of their parts. Aren't you happy? No, not really, Frenchie, but I think I know a way I could be. Could you help me? Of course! Not asking a few more clarifying questions before agreeing to help someone become happy. You don't know what Sandy wants. Can I come over to your place? Sure, come on. Wait, now? Sandy needs to go over to start her transformation right this moment? Well, I guess if Sandy needs to be sewn into her pants stitch by stitch, it makes sense that Frenchie needed all night and all of school the next day to prepare Sandy for her big bad reveal. Children burst from the school and scatter to the right and race to the left. Does anyone know where the carnival is? No, they're just running for the joy of their next cigarette. How many? How many people just wondered how Blanche just teleported from inside the school to the cotton candy machine? At least one. I'm not crazy! Well, that resolved almost as suddenly and unnaturally as it was introduced. Symmetry. Danny Zuko turned jock? That's right, I did. What are you doing, deserting us? In a school that spreads false rumors faster than a woman can walk to a car, somehow Danny's friends missed that he was running track? Sandy? Tell me about it. The problem here isn't just the nebulous and possibly dubious reasons for the big change, it's the complete lack of any kind of character progression. Sandy goes from put together to cigs and leather so fast we don't have any chance to authenticate the change. Meaning all this comes off as more of a Halloween costume than actual personal choice or personality growth. The disturbing lack of sunblock on this guy's face. Sandy sings the line, if you're filled with affection you're too shy to convey, but Danny has not been shy about his advances. Sandy has been uncomfortable with his conveying since the beach scene at the start of the movie, so if I was Danny, I would have a very confused boner right now. This scene is fun until you remember that the peepers are watching from outside the funhouse and magically found a way to float up here to see Danny and Sandy dance. Damn it! Travolta and Newton John are absolutely fire in this song. They pretty much carry the goodwill this movie has on the backs of them, absolutely slaying this one song alone. Fine, I'll get one sin back, but this changes nothing. Wait a second, is that car flying? What the fuck? And is that the same car from the T-Bird's mass delusion earlier? Suddenly a theory about Sandy having drowned in the opening beach scene and the whole movie being her brain's final death hallucination is beginning to make actual sense and f me, I hate that I just said that out loud. See kids, the moral of the story is to sell out to your own sense of self in order to attract someone that you have a simple crush on. No need to explore your own identity fully before flying off into the clouds of commitment. Conform! Smoke cigarettes! And by all means, avoid asking adults for advice because they are likely inappropriately interested in you anyway. That's disgusting! It's a dingle hopper. Humans use these little babies to straighten their hair out. Our very own Coach Calhoun. Tonight, we are the greatest hockey team in the world. I'll give you 75 cents for the whole car, including your chick. Maniacal lad. <laughs> Maniacal lad. Hey! You guys play here too? Weird. I was just out and about. Thought I'd see if anybody wanted to play some round ball. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, the big Charleston contest! <laughs> just be yourselves and have a ball. That's what it's all about, after all. So forget about the camera and think about the beat. We'll give the folks at home a real big treat. <laughs> I know now that you respect me. I've made a huge mistake. You guys ain't thinking about changing your mind, are you? No way. Good, because we're racing for pinks. <laughs> <laughs>